As colleges and universities further explore different usage of digital courseware, questions arise around the issue of scaling programs with new pedagogical designs. What happens when a school makes a deliberate attempt to move beyond course-level implementations and pilot programs? What lessons can we learn? At the Realize It Users Conference this past fall, we had the chance to interview two schools tackling this challenge, American Public University System and Bay Path University. Both schools have evolved their usage in an iterative, multi-step approach. We started out by looking at our competency-based education and seeing if we could come up with a model whereby we could actually have students really, truly demonstrate their mastery, but also give them an opportunity to learn material that maybe they, don't, they have not mastered yet. Mm -hmm. So the way to do that was to actually utilize the adaptive engine from Realize It. Our second big endeavor is what we call our e-learning framework. And our e-learning framework was a problem where we needed to scale up about 1,600 courses into an interactive, digital, um, engaging format. So now we have a rapid content creator that allows us to quickly, within, within minutes, produce an interactive, digital, um, engaging lesson that our students you know, can quickly go through, which is also adaptive. So we have a lot of you know, questions and rich content, reflection kinds of things in there. Our goal is to have it um, be uh, embedded in any course where it makes sense um, pedagogically, you know, content-wise and all of that. So you know, as, as broad a scope as we can possibly, possibly get. We started with a handful of courses that were just nominated. And Along the way, we, we kind of developed a methodology for evaluating, deciding, and implementing what courses would be on the roadmap. Right. We asked both schools to describe which problems they are trying to solve by deploying courseware at scale. What does competency-based do? Competency-based recognizes prior learning. It builds upon that prior learning, and then it gives it an authentic assessment at a mastery level, yeah. and it does it that's aligned, and this is the most important part, it's aligned to standards that are designed and built and validated by the business and industry. So they know they have the best and most current knowledge that's there. So when they go on to their next life in, in the world of work, they know that they have real skills, knowledge and abilities and attitudes that can be demonstrated and have been demonstrated in meaningful ways. It was a learning theory problem where we have online learners and just by reading text, you know, in a long line class and resources and answering questions and doing assignments, we were finding that, um, you know, learning theory tells us that if you have the student interact more and engage in the content, as well as with each other and the, and the professor, um, that you'll have a much richer experience and that student will learn a lot faster. Oftentimes when we think of adaptive, it started out in, in its history often looking at remediation, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll try to remediate, but this is, goes beyond that. It's not only the remediation and feeding those things that you need to improve upon through the feedback loop, but it's also enhancing and enriching. So it, it feeds all students in a personalized pathway. I think the bigger group of our students are people that might not choose an online education as their first choice in a perfect world, but it's not a perfect world because their logistical situations, be it family or professional or financial, this is the best or possibly the only option they have to get their degree. And so how do we um, find a way to provide them with the tools and the support to be successful in this environment where it's very easy to just not make any connection to the university at all because you never set foot on campus. So traditional higher ed has sort of assumed that an 18-year-old walking into classroom, you know, has these needs, has this body of knowledge, and then these needs to get to this particular point in time. Working with adult students um, sort of changes things up because they have had some experiences and some learning outside of a three-credit experience. How will leadership know if the programs have been successful? This is all grounded in student success, and by that I mean that we have students that are retained, 
because they're engaged, that they're persisting across courses and have subsequent success across those courses, as well as they're completing their degrees. Yes. That's, that's the first level. The second level, we're looking at our institutional learning outcomes and the program learning outcomes itself. So we're able to really dig deep into the program learning level outcomes to see if they're achieving that status and that, that uh, capability at the program level, but also at the institutional level. So we've built our own scorecard, if you will, um, almost like a rankings, U.S. News and World Report. U.S. News and World Report doesn't do a great job with adult-serving institutions. It's, yeah. it, you know, the assumptions are sort of, you know, residential, 18 to 22-year-old model. So we, at the big picture, have these, you know, scorecard uh, data. Underlying these conversations are two key insights. The shift from course level to program level planning and evaluation, and the primary focus not on the technology, but rather on the pedagogical redesign. As other schools move beyond pilots and digital courseware, these two insights should provide useful guidance on what questions to ask. Mm -hmm.